This is huge. Also, dichter darf er hier nicht ran. Nee, nee, alles gut. So, da brauche ich noch den Knopf. Da liegt er. Ja, stell dich mal vor. So, okay. Who? Okay, so welcome everybody. Today we will enjoy the second uh, second uh, lecture. You remember still the first lecture of Mr. Sobek about his philosophy of the new Heimat and his, let's say, future thinking about how to minimize uh, carbon emission. And today there is Volkwin Mark, my partner, the founder of GMP, the principal of AAC. And you, give, you have to give me maybe three minutes to explain a little bit Volkwin Mark and why he will give this special kind of lecture. So uh, Volkwin was born in 1936, so he's still a young guy. He was born in Ostpreußen, Königsberg, and lived then in Danzig. And Danzig is a port city, and there he maybe um, grew up his Heimat feeling about maritime, about ports, about sea. That is very important to understand his lecture today. And unfortunately, because of the Second War and all th um, after the Second War, he had to um, flu, fly, escape to, to uh, West uh, Germany. And uh, he stayed there a short time in Turing. Tür Where were you? In I don't know, but then he went to Berlin. <laughs> East Germany. <laughs> I don't know all the names. But then he went to uh, to uh, TU Berlin, studied, and then he moved uh, to Braunschweig, and uh, he also studied in TU Delft, where he uh, deepened in town planning. And after, one day after he made his diploma with uh, Meinhard von Gerkan, they decided to... Uh, Round up their first, the first office GMP in 1965, and everybody knew the success story that their diploma was Tegel Airport, and they got the co commission to realize Tegel Airport. Then a lot of new success came, a lot of not only interesting projects, you also were the president of BDA, that is uh, um, the Bund Deutsche Architekten, which is was a quite hard job for him, but he got to know a lot about, <laughs> um, let's say, everything behind architecture. And then in 85, he uh, was invited to be professor in uh, RWTH Aachen. And he followed Gottfried Böhm, who is a Pritzker Preis winner, and uh, he took over the Lehrstuhl für Stadtpreisplanung und Werkplanung. And uh, there he studied, he lectured a long, long time. Yeah, he also is a principal of AAC. And um, I tell you, so I could tell you now the whole evening what he did. But Volkwin also is a sailor. And during the, let's say, founding up GMP, he also had time sometimes to um, travel to Denmark, and there he found a ship, a sailing ship, which, which used to be, I think you will go more in details, but it's a very unique old ship, which he and his family and friends transformed in the ship you will see later on. And uh, during, let's say, his work as the founder of GMP, teaching in Aachen, he found also time to do a lot of sailing. And I also had the honor to also sail with you 
uh, we sailed in South America to Cuba. We sailed to uh, he sailed to um, Greenland to Scandinavia. I think there's no place on this world where the active hasn't been. I think he active is a part of your family, and uh, so he was thinking, what can I do with the ship once I will not be sailing, let's say, six weeks or three months a year. So he was actually um, bringing the ship into a foundation and now the ship is reused, a good theme of our workshop, not only in a, sh in a, in a, in a sailing ship, but also in a ship who does research. And that is the topic of Falkwind's uh, lecture, what the active ship now is doing and how far the active will take part in our problem at this workshop, how to minimize carbon emission. Now it sounds very, let's say, full of riddles, but I think uh, Falkwind now will solve the problem or give your, your, your secrets to the students. So let's welcome Professor Falkwind Mark. That is your stage. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a question of generations. When I heard Zobeck, you know, I was so delighted that he came here and took the time and was explaining what he was writing and which what will be the next book. But then I got the impression young people and the world is going down and at the end of the world, at the end of the future. And that's as old as human beings are. Even Jesus Christ when he lived 2,000 years ago, uh, believed in the end of the world. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, we had very often this situation, but all the time, even if the danger was feared, and if there was a danger or not, or a real danger, then in the end, uh, it didn't happen and the world was going on. And, and so far I'm an uh, optimist uh, for, uh, but, but we are in a wave of motions. No doubt about the facts, you know. He told about the facts. Uh, and facts and feeling is something different. Uh, and when I, in your age, wha was in your age, I believed totally in progress. I believed totally in the future of technique. I believed the world will be changed and sooner or later it will be changed into a paradise. I did not fly from Danzig, from my home in Harbor Tower uh, to West Germany. I fled into the Russian occupied zone, East Germany. And there I had to learn eight years Russian. And, and so far I'm very, very poor in English. But uh, there I learned how human being and how human, human society will change the globus and change it into a paradise. And in spite of the propaganda in Western world, which says they are absolutely agnostic, they only destroy the world. I learned all the huge plans they wanted to change the climate and they wanted to change, uh, was heißt Steppe? Huh? Grasslands, like Ukraine, especially Ukraine, into uh, 
a garden. And so I had to learn uh, big projects, making stripes as wide as this country here, Schleswig-Holstein, is planting woods like a zebra uh, to change the climate. How to uh, produce artificial rain by uh, planes uh, spraying Judith into the air. How uh, the biggest thing is how to take the rivers and uh, to br bring them to the grasslands to, to make it fruitful. And the biggest project was the so-called David Plan, Davidov Plan, and that was uh, to make big dams for Ob and Yenisei. These are the biggest uh, rivers behind the Ural. Before they had done a lot, uh, for we all read about Saporoshia, Dnieper, Ukraine. This river, the Dnieper River, is one big step with dams to produce electricity and water for the grasslands in the Ukraine. And this was built in the 30s under the Soviet uh, uh, government with other horrible conditions, of course. And uh, so uh, they had the slogan, electricity and Soviet power. This is communism in future. That was, uh, that was the way to do it. Well, uh, I had to learn that the two biggest rivers in Siberia, eastern of Ural, would get big dams. There would be, in the end, a sea of the size of a nearly the, the size of the Baltic, and it would come that high that they tried uh, to make a big growth by atomic power. The, the, the attempts were done in Zemipalatinsk to make a big canal to pour this water down to As uh, um, Kazakhstan and uh, making a lot of energy, electricity, of course, uh, like we want to do it today, and then pouring the water into the Aralsee, you know where the Aralsee is? This is the one which is now drying out, step by step by step. And, uh, and, and, and of course, canals for big ships, and then going on with this canal to the Caspian Sea, for the Caspian Sea has lost about 10 meters of the water. Meanwhile, Baku is not anymore, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the fortresses which where the water are standing up. And the idea was to change even Kazakhstan into a paradise. And so they started to stop two rivers, Amudarya, Sirdarya, coming down from the mountains from the south. Right? And they said, now we can take the water, we make big fields for cotton wool, for said Baumwolle? Cotton. Cotton. And then they started to put every mo money into the army. And instead of doing this project, uh, they uh, built tanks, planes, atomic bombs, and so on and so on. Uh, and this society which was done to do this job is closed in 1984. So long they followed this project. That was the biggest project in the world. It, it, it's a, a, a bit similar to Hoover Dam project and Tennessee ir irrigation project uh, in the New Deal policy in the 20s, all the same like the here in Europe was Atlantropa project and so on. Well, this was an op optimistic vision for the future, changing the world by huge constructions. In Germany, in, the, in this time, there was an architect, an engineer, uh, and he uh, made the plan 
And all the famous architects, like uh, Behrens, uh, like Dörgast, all the, uh, the our our all the architects we admired, they were keen to take part in this project. That was a big dam in Gibraltar. To let, uh, to, uh, to, uh, you know, there's a powerful current going into the Mediterranean. For the uh, Mediterranean is ever evaporating, uh, and. Uh, to produce electricity, have a direct contact to Morocco by, by, by railway, a lot of uh, locks in stairs to bring the big ships down. It's all planned. There are big books. Nobody is speaking about it. And the idea was to lower the Mediterranean for 50 meters in every town like Marseille, uh, or whatever, they got a lower town, and uh, the existing harbors got a dam, like, like in the Netherlands, keeping the existing water level. And uh, they said, we will get enormous much land in the Nile Delta, in Rhone Delta. It's uh, for agriculture. Well, I stop it now. For uh, you live now in a time which is absolute opposite to this. And we fear what people are doing. We don't believe in future, we fear future. And we see the signs, what is going wrong. Well, and uh, the reason uh, th this was very uh, uh, spontaneous to say, well, I will make a lecture now for I think uh, this was an uh, enthusiastic feeling. Now it's a depressing feeling. And I would say, be calm. It's somehow in between. And uh, there are chances, and, 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 and we are not at the end of the world. But nevertheless, we have to do our duty and do in our profession what other people do in their area, and that's the story I want to tell. Well, I start at first how I learned what is sustainability. And uh, you see a ship, and uh, which is now on the way. I just got today a fantastic, uh, I will send it around the phone to, uh, from the crew. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have a, I, I, I like harbors, I like ships, and I had nothing to do that, all to spend all my time and my, my fortune in, in two ships. And uh, this ship, I made now a, a foundation, was heißt das, Stiftung, and the foundation has a name, Aktiv uh, Expedition fund in Denmark. I made it in Denmark for the three came from Denmark. And the foundation is for this kind of uh, uh, research. Hmm? research. Well, and what you see here is a little booklet for a uh, lesson which was given uh, to get money and uh, that's here 100,000 euro worth for uh, the Bill Gates uh, uh, Foundation gave it to overcome a, a, a problem, a short problem in financing. Well, and now that's a ship. And you see here a ship which is built in the, f it, it's the last oak built in ship uh, 1952, and it's a wooden ship in oak and Douglas trees and different kinds of wood. And uh, I, that, that is the end, is the result of the ship uh, as it is now. In this cars, indeed, that's not Greenland, this is here, uh, uh, Island. Uh, 
But this ship taught me uh, what is uh, sustainability. You see here the place where it is built in uh, 1950, and you see the spans, the, bow, uh, the banded ones, and you see they, they have to be shifted. This is a piece, this is a piece, this is a piece. And this is from oak, fresh oak. And you take the piece of the oak which is banded. For oak no normally makes this. And a clever uh, ship's carpenter is using this part of the oak. And he can use it green for, of course, it dries up and it shrinks. But uh, this composition of pieces doesn't matter, for in the end, the hull will be stiff. For the hull will be done by planks. And the planks are this uh, planks. And my ship needed oak planks of 12 meter lengths. This thickness is uh, uh, so and a half tall. And that the thick, that wide, and every plank is 12 meter. It's not just to the end. Without any, what says, ast? Without any knot. And these planks have to be uh, put together, uh, ha have to be used after they have dried for six years. Well, uh, the masts are from Douglas trees, I, I, I will go on, but, and here you see my ship under construction, and what's funny, you see wooden nails, if you have more money, then you take brass nails, if you have not much money, then you take steel nails, but after six years, they are rotten, for oak wood is a sour wood, it's acid. Well, and these are the two men. That's the ma man with whom I uh, had to rebuild the ship. That is Mr. Ring Andersen, and that is his son, uh, which I'm new dealing now. And it did get nothing else than one sheet of paper saying the ship has to carry so and so much. These are the lines, this is the length. It has not to get more draft, and then he is building. That's handicraft. He knows how a ship has to be built without any further plan. It's the same with the rig. And so I learned, uh, I, I learned by these people a lot. I could tell now the, the whole night what I learned. I will not do it. And then this ship went down to water under Dennis Schleck. That time, the first name was Mona. Later on, it got the name Active. On <laughs> so it was a coaster, with, uh, uh, but with a minimized rig and with a big radar house, for it was built to uh, transport material to Greenland. And that means they once a year they sailed uh, from Denmark to Greenland, and then they stood there for all the summertime in Greenland and delivered little parts to the little places, for there is no big town, nothing, not even a harbor. It's a coastline of about 4,000 kilometers, and uh, th even the southern part, they are, uh, were living some Inuits. Well, and uh, uh, so these masts are only to, to, to put out the goods uh, like a crane and uh, auxiliary sails. And you see the sails here. Uh, it's not here on, on here with a, with, with a, with a petrol engine. You know, in, in, in old times they had these, these engines. 
Well, and uh, this was a situation where I got it, and I said, well, we will rebuild it and produce a new rig like it has been before for these kind of ships where uh, this size was used to go even to the Rio de la Plata, to go to uh, South America, uh, to cruise in the Atlantic and so on. And so uh, we did. And I had a friend in Denmark, as you see here, a dock, a dock with a hole here. This dock was used by the German air fleet in the war, for you could put in your water planes, and the wings were sticking out here and on the other side. Uh, but it was quite the right size for the ship. And these are my Danish friends here, all, all together. These were all the people they came all together uh, to build on this ship. And and you see it now in this dock. And uh, this is already, uh, uh, meanwhile, we had set new masts, a new deck, and so on. And what is about the wood? I told you about oak. Uh, later on, I needed new planks, 400 running meters of planks to renew the ship. And 12 meters long. I couldn't get worldwide planks of this size without knots in this thickness as wide. And you need for construction a certain length, otherwise, you know, then you have too much joints and then it's too weak, like a rubber boat. It has to be stiff uh, to, uh, to, to form a shell. And I got these planks. It was without any chance. Since the 50s, it was not p possible to get this wood. And in the end, I got it. And from where? You, not from Germany, not from Canada, nowhere. I got it from Denmark. And where? There was a forest. This was planted as marine wood. When was it planted? After... Uh, Mm. Wie heißt der? Uh, Nelson. In 1805 uh, came with the British fleet, shut down the Danish fleet, be, uh, anchoring before the harbor of Copenhagen. And he bombarded f with his fleet Copenhagen, and uh, that was uh, during Napoleon time. Uh, the, the Danish lost their fleet, and the king, uh, uh, Charles IV, ordered to plant new wood for future fleets. And uh, so they planted in Fyn on this island marine forests. The, and, and marine forests consisted on, in oaks or in uh, Douglas trees. And that means oaks for the planks, and for the spans, and Douglas trees for the masts. And they have to be together, otherwise disease. If you have a mass of this height, then you need about 40 meter high tree. You cut the upper part. And this mass is growing between strong oaks, which only can go up and not become white, for there are too much of these oaks. And in between are now the Douglas trees, is the needle tree, and he's losing all his is that Zweige? branches. So they will not develop big knots. And he's going up and going up and going up, and only this upper part is green. And he's a bit going a bit quick, uh, growing a bit quicker than the oaks. And you can cut them with a height of 40 meter after, let's say, 80, 90 years. Then you have a good mass. These masts, you know, these are those trees, uh, cut from those trees. Uh, but my 
oaks, the youngest oaks I had. Oak is growing much slower, and Germany has lost mainly all its oaks for the Dutch, the English, the Belgian, the Swedish, all bought from the Prussians or for the people from Brandenburg, the North German oaks, uh, not only to build houses, but to build ships. So we have only these firs and, and this kind of wood. Well, and uh, this, now, now uh, it was ready to cut a oak, plant it. The youngest one was, you can make a dendro dendrologic survey. The youngest tree was from 1838. This is sustainability. And all, and this, Word is misuse. It comes from uh, from the uh, forest economy. It's absolutely misused. That today, if you build a car, after five years you don't need uh, also abschreibung. Uh, was abschreibung? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, tax is uh, organized that you, uh, uh, it only needs five years and you can take it away the next one. Even the big ships you see here passing by have a time of 15 years. And now they speak about sustainability and so on. It's, you know, it's one, uh, it, it's changing a word in a deeper sense. That's the only thing I, I want to explain. Well, uh, I needed six years, every weekend, six years, with all my friends, with my family, uh, to do the job for, you can't pay a shipyard, you only can use friends. And I was so happy that I had a friend who organized this kind of yard for himself. And now you see the ship here lying uh, with the masts. You see the height already with sails on it, and now starting to sail the ship for, you know, it's, it's not a sailing ship as you think, it, 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 it is like this. You have to sail it like a surfboard. Who's sailing a surfboard? You have no rudder behind. You only can change the sails forward or backward, and then uh, the ship is moving to right or left. And uh, the next thing is, uh, there is no winch, nothing. It's so as these ship ships have been. For if you have a winch, then you need iron and it's expensive. You do it by, uh, by, by uh, human power. And now we are putting up the sails, as you see. If France, every kind of age, I did it very often also with students, but only for sailing, not in the beginning. And also, well, and the next thing is half of the sails you have to set, uh, you have to put uh, into the yards and in the top sails above, but you have to go up. And in every weather, you have to, to do it day and night. And if you make long uh, tours, let's say, and you are crossing the Atlantic, then it takes from, from the Canaries to the Caribbean uh, two and a half weeks. Then you are sailing day and night, and you have to go up under every weather condition, whatever it is. And, uh, uh, well, I stopped sailing when I, I was not able anymore uh, to, to go up. Uh, you know, then I became my own passenger and I didn't like it. <laughs> well, and here you, uh, and that is a procedure of learning. You see the ship sailing here, and now you can't do it with a rudder. You have to take this sail tight, uh, then she starts moving and you can s support it a bit with the rudder. Then you see now the four sails are flapping and there is no power in the yard sails in these. Then she turns a bit more. 
Then you see the sails, have the crews running up. The first thing is to take this sail close. Then the next is to open these sails. The third phase is to take the four sails tight. You see the people here? The next phase is in this moment she turns and now these sails sail backward and press the ship even more round the corner. In this moment, you see, it's still here. It's stopping, pressing her over. Then you, uh, uh, the same people are running to the brasses and turn the yards, and now she is uh, on the other way. That is cruising. And if you hear anything about cruising, it's absolutely nonsense. Nobody. They are only sitting uh, and, 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 and taking their cocktail uh, and looking stupid. This is cruising, you know, and, and therefore comes the name. Well, uh, of course we cruise anywhere. Here it was absolutely forbidden to cruise up. <laughs> <laughs> but well, absolutely forbidden, but the Italians like, are like Italians, you know, all the the ship stopped and said hello, and you know, e e even the polar sets. Well, uh, and well, then we, we started uh, uh, to use the ship uh, and to sail. This is the Adrian Sea uh, in, in, in Adria. Uh, you see, there's a sail behind if you, if you have more wind then you only take part of the sails. This is the aft sail, the so-called Bresan, and the front sails, and one of the upper yards. You, you have 13 sails, and you do it due to the conditions, how it works. And, well, uh, this is normal. In this case, I am looking for, for do dolphins. Uh, so, and, uh, well, uh, this is calm sea. You can, <laughs> no, 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 really, look. If you see this, this is the horizon, and there are no real waves. It's just speed. This is about 10 to 11 knots. Th she's pushing very hard, for, for she, have, she has 60 tons of ballast, 11 tons of fuel. Uh, it's a heavy ship. It's, uh, even if it's empty. Well, and money making, uh, I hoped to do it with advertising. It was a disaster. But the, uh, uh, this, this uh, factory built a lot of own ships later on, called Humboldt, really, bigger ones even. Well, uh, this was students sailing, uh, one against the other one. And you see, if you have some more sails set, like the other one, then you can even overhaul on, on lee side. Otherwise, you will never, uh, in the shadow of wind, pass a, a ship like this. You know, this is sportive joy. And then the next thing was how to earn money. Uh, a lot of movies have done with this ship to earn some money, but all the in the end, it was all a disaster. This is a French film uh, about the Newfoundland uh, fishermen. Or yeah, it is a, it's a British canal, and you should see high tide up and down. And if the water is gone, then she st stands on her own keel. Uh, and uh, the last, uh, uh, no, not the last, the, 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 uh, one of the pictures before that in the Mediterranean, done near, near, near Malta, this is uh, Bobby Dick, this is really good. Um, there's a classical with Perkins, very classical movie, and this one uh, is a new one, and uh, it's, it's very good, uh, with famous actors, and of course, with stories, all these stories had to be burned, otherwise you ha would have to pay taxes. It, it's, it's a shame. And uh, 
And uh, this is Ethan Hawke, and this is William Hurt. Uh, those are the famous, famous actors. Uh, well, uh, in the end, we, we sailed a lot, uh, certainly 600,000 miles during, I started it in 76, 1976, and my problem was I had never time. My longest holiday w were three weeks, to be frank. So, you know, and then I jumped on, uh, I sailed. In the beginning, I sailed with the family, later on it was sailed. And, uh, but in the end, we sailed, we preferred to sail uh, in the Arctic. And in this case, for she is built, and I forgot to tell us, this shell was about 50, uh, 30 meter long, had planking outside of this thickness and inside the spans. And it's so heavy built, and so that is so strong if she gets pressure by ice. As an example, you can't go home and you, you stop there and she, she is in, 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 in the ice. Then uh, she is stiff enough, but different to her iron ship. She st starts to scream. <coughs> you can hear it. And she will press, press. And if the pressure is too big, then of suddenly she, she jumps up in the ice for this form, and for she is elastic. The spans are so, so close, and the, the planks on it, so that is a real shell. An iron ship between the spans would get louder curves, and then it would be fixed in the ice and <coughs> crash and sink. But uh, the limit is about 30, 40 meters, and it's finished. Well, and so we si made an excursion. This was the very first excursion, and now I come to expeditions, which are now later on going on. And this is the expedition 1908, the, Den the Denmark expedition. Uh, this was unknown country, and this was high summer. Uh, when they arrived, here they lost six people, for from here they went on with dog sleds to make measurements and so on, and six never came back. And on this ex uh, expedition, you, you know perhaps the name Alfred Wegener, the famous polar man. And Alfred Wegener was in the 20s, that was in 1908, the first man to put up from here. They called this the villa. And uh, here they put up uh, hail, uh, 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 Wasserstoff balloons for uh, uh, meteorological measurements. And since then, uh, it, it started. And Alfred Wegener on this journey got the idea, seeing the ice moving, that even the, uh, wie nennt man das, the, uh, the Schollentektonik of the globus, that even the continents move. You know that the continent, that was discovered during this uh, 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 expedition. Well, and we said we want to do the same, and we were the first ship going up there. <laughs> uh, that's left from the villa. Here, uh, some of the dead people from this expedition. But this is high summer time, and <laughs> well, and well, and if you go now to Greenland to give you a feeling, uh, Greenland, Greenland is like a big ball, and the middle is deeper than the level of the water of the ocean, and we have about 3,000 meter high ice in the middle. And it's like a plum pudding, and the, the, the ice is floating, going to the end, and then uh, coming down here is through the valleys. You see the ice here. So that it's coming down, melting, running out the fjords, 
And as an example, this, called, this mountain is called Grundwigskerke. It go, it's going straight, uh, straight down to the water. Uh, you know, this is a this is an area of 300 kilometers only fjords with islands. Uh, and the height here, to give you a feeling, is 200, 2,500 meters, straight to the water up. This is the outside of this bowl. Well, and here you see the ship, tiny, lovely. And later on, we sailed in the northern parts, uh, four times, and uh, we found out that the best thing is to mix artists and scientists. For the artists are all the time doing nonsense, but very creative, with a lot of entertainment, laughing, cooking, uh, provoking, and the scientists become really, uh, yeah, they like it. And uh, we got the experience that it's the best thing you can do, mix artists and scientists and making um, these things. Better not longer than eight weeks. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, normally you get on a ship on, on a long voyage after three weeks a crisis. Then people get their own problems. The biggest problem in the world are the people, not the nature. Well, uh, Can you see the ship? Normal, normal Greenlandic dimensions. Uh, you know, it's too shallow here. You, she, she stops here. Uh, these w are normally full of glaciers, and the glaciers go down, and for m millions on millions and millions of years, hundreds of millions, you know, mostly the, 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 the our globe was full of ice. Where the ice was, the ice scrubbing on the rocks. And it depends what kind of rocks. And if you go to Finland or to Sweden, you have to see the polished granite rock. And uh, it's very important for the now, what I have to tell, it's so fine, this powder, that if you blow it in the air, it stays in the air. If it runs into the water, it will not sink. Perhaps after uh, a lot of years, but uh, uh, and this makes the world uh, fertile. All the rivers in the world, everywhere, are places of fertilization. The Nile, the Amazonas, the Indus, uh, whatever you take. And all what uh, makes it fertile are, is the dust or the powder done by glaciers in the mountains, which is so fine, nobody can do it artificially, that it comes down and this makes the earth fruitful. And that is the reason for most of the continents are on the northern part, that the northern hemisphere is a corn chamber of the world. Uh, uh, and and uh, for even where there have no been no glaciers, then the waters from the glaciers have made it fertile. Well, uh, to go into the, uh, into the country, we, we had this little rubber boat with a Rotax engine to fly. Uh, it, 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 you can go up to 2,000 meters, but the problem is it's dangerous. If, if you have a failure with the engine or so, then uh, it's not very good to come down. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm sitting there. You can do it with two people. The idea was also we wanted to make a circumpolar navigation and see all the tundra lakes. There are millions of tundra lakes, and there you can make drillings, and you can take carbon drillings, go with this plane for, you know, that you need like a moped, a bit of a sprit. If you do it the other way, uh, with, with, with a, a, a cavalcade of helicopters, then it's a thousand times as expensive for the same measurements. 
well, uh, yeah, uh, it's a fun to do it. Uh, two times we collapse in the water, but uh, nothing happened. Save, save the Lord. Uh, th thanks the Lord. Well, uh, if you are there now, uh, then you, you get friends. Uh, they, they look very lovely, li uh, very nice. Better you meet them not in nature, for if they are in nature, they are hungry. And it's fantastic to eat a man, you know, then, uh, especially the wives. For they get two, two cabs, eat nothing, drink nothing during the whole winter, and after they have born their calves, then they come, teach them how to hunt, and are hungry. You have no chance. Uh, well, uh, that is the reason that before you go on land, then you have to learn, uh, well, y you better never use it. Uh, but if you uh, uh, take these guns, then you have this very big caliber. And if you try it, then you have have the shoulder blue. <laughs> for uh, they are very for for in this case you need very strong rifles. Well, and this is a this is very fantastic. This man, perhaps he will get the Nobel Prize. I do not know. That is Midi Krosing. That is a geologist, and. A fantastic man is half Inuit and half Dane. Uh, this is a Danish poet, very famous worldwide. Uh, this is uh, Daniel Richter, you, you know, this painter. This is the uh, artist. This is uh, das, that's uh, the most famous cartoon, cartoonist, uh, and so on and so on and so on. And, and I forgot the name. Wer hat denn diese wunderbaren Figuren gemacht auf dem Bundesrat in Berlin? Ein Architekt und Künstler. Der ist jetzt gestorben. Ja, alle die guten Freunde sterben jetzt alle. Gott. Und, uh, well, uh, this man had the idea to use this rock flower which after hundreds of millions of years pushed this dust with water into the ocean. And uh, it's especially the Greenlandic uh, rock flower, it's the same with the Antarctic rock flower. And it's very fantastic if you go to the Antarctic and sail there, then you have this rock flower and in spite of the fact that you have nearly half the year no light, and the water is very cold, then it's starting the uh, electrolyse with sun power and water, and with this finest possible mineral, and plankton is growing by electrolyse. And after plankton grows, and it has 48 times of the speed of a normal plant on land, exploding nearly, then you get krill, all these little animals, and in the end you have the big blue whale eating it. So, and uh, uh, if you, uh, oceanography uh, and all these things is a science which is nearly not discovered. It's absolutely long. You will read about these things not until now, any, uh, not much, but in future you will read a lot. Well, we decided now to make uh, an expedition after these four expeditions. Uh, with the ship is used for this purpose, is th that's the basis of, the, uh, uh, of, of my foundation. And uh, Jonas is a skipper and expedition leader, but together with scientists. And the man I showed you is a mastermind behind. And uh, examining the effect of glacial rock flower as an agent for increasing primary p 
production in the North Atlantic Gur. Well, uh, where do uh, CO2 is coming from? You know it. Uh, but it's funny, if you take a newspaper, these idiots take all the time the cooling towers, uh, where it's only very clean, damp coming out. And they think people are so foolish that they think this has something to do with this kind of smoke which is coming out here. And this is a long time circle. That means nature is producing a huge amount of CO2, a huge amount. And before there were plants on the, on the earth, on, on, on the continents, only the water absorbed all the uh, CO2 produced by nature. For you know, a tree is using CO2 and producing oxygen. Uh, but that is the time before it happened. And this is a circle, how it works. Later on, people came. And now, in addition to the production of CO2, people produce it. And it was nearly nothing. Uh, then they started to burn the forests, the woods, and started a bit. Uh, then they had cattle. Yeah, well, the, the, the cattle produced a bit. It was nearly nothing. So it were, went on with the Egyptians, with the Romans, with all the population in the world. And, you know, in the 20s, 100 years ago, there were still only two m milliards people, not more. And, well, then it went on, and the men started with an industrialization. They did not burn just wood. Now they started to dig in the earth, put out coal, and in the end, not long ago, they started to drill oil, getting it out, and now they produce it. And how much? 36 gigatons per year, per year, in spite of the nature 740 gigatons. And normally, uh, there was a balance. The vegetation, meanwhile, and the ocean absorbed what the nature produced. And this is production of nature. 740, uh, but now not, not start people. And you know, the, the year w when the climatologen start uh, with, with their relations, it's 18. 1850. That means in 1850 started industrialization and a lot with the engine of damp and coal, the first industrial revolution with burning coal. And a lot of, 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 of people going into the mountains. And it became more and more and more and more in the moment it's oil and then it became gas. So uh, this is the produc production now. And that means the all the humans today produce not more than 5% of the dioxide which is produced by the nature. But the point is, if you have a balance, you know, and what you tune only a bit on, on one side, the, the balance is not okay. And if it goes on and on and on, then you get a collapse. Th that we, uh, the human mankind only produces 5%. And, uh, well, think about nature. You, you know about methane gas. You know that uh, the ice is melting in the tundra. There comes a lot of methane out. That is the natural produ production, uh, which uh, adds to what nature normally is doing. Uh, when we w made a plan to make a circumpolar navigation on the north side of the globe, uh, we had to ask the Russian army, 
by Putin. Uh, that's a long story. It's a very long story. But there were areas which are absolutely forbidden to go there in behalf of foul water. Do you know what foul water is? It's also near the, the, the British Islands, Scotland. That is water. It's like uh, aqua minerale con gas. There is coming so much bubbles uh, from the deep sea that a ship is in danger going down. And the Russian had to stop uh, certain areas for if they come with a big submarines and you drive there and suddenly you have so much of methan in the water that it's going down and touching the ground. These are so-called waters. You can find that in, in normal sea maps where you better not go. Uh, well, I only want to make it relative. Human mankind making 5% and the normal tolerance to, to, to get it absorbed by nature may be half of it. But nevertheless, 2.5 of coal dioxide still is there. And if this happens year per year, and it was increasing, increasing happening since, let's say, 1850, then you need every uh, uh, year 5.2% makes, in 10 years, 25%, makes in 40 years, 50%, and so on. And this now, and then you come to the kipping point. And even if you reduce everything, like architects, and <coughs> then uh, it, the biggest chain uh, danger is it's not enough, and it's going on, nevertheless, but only a bit smaller. So uh, uh, the, the real chance, uh, only chance, is not only to absorb all of it, for we are near a dipping point, even to get it out of the air, for it's already too much. That, that is a problem. I only want to say uh, uh, that th things have, are very uh, complicated. Well, next. Uh, how to do it? Uh, lovely water. Uh, well, what's, what is interesting is, only 29% is land mass on the globe, and 71% is water. We know everything about the land mass, but nearly nothing about the water. Uh, for it was a, it's an unknown element, an unknown continent of the oceans. And uh, all the plants on the land masses uh, uh, produce one percent biomass uh, uh, of what is in the ocean with plankton. Nobody can believe it. You know, it's not in our brain, but. I do not know whether you were swimming during the night in the water and you have now in all the fingers uh, Meeresglühen. What is that? Glowing plankton. Glowing plankton. You know it. That's it. You can't see it in the day. It's absolutely clear. But this is enough mass to produce much, much more uh, absorption of CO2 than all the plants with the land mass. Well, seen from above, you see here it's blooming. And the explosion of uh, 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 plankton is, is 48 times as quick as plants. You know, uh, I told you about how long a tree <laughs> needs before it can be harvested, if it's real trees and not this shit for paper. And if you go into a microscope, uh, then you can see it in all different forms. 
was also very fascinating on board. We had my microscope, everything, and studied it, also the little animals. Uh, and if you take now a water column, and you have the bluing, bluing uh, uh, plankton there, uh, and you have uh, that, uh, you see the height, nicht? down, and the average depth of all the oceans uh, in the world, the average depth is 2.6 kilometers, that means 3,600 meters, but the light is not going very deep. So the light is going only here, the most light is here, seven meters deep, then it becomes darker and darker, and only the upper part is the area where this plankton is blooming. And if it's very long, also plankton, if it's not eaten or so, then it's sinking down. And then if it sinks down, then you have sediments, and not only sediments. You have beyond these sediments oil. This is only produced by plankton in the old times of the oceans. That gives you uh, a, a feeling about the organic mass, which is kept there, and uh, it's, it's, it's Kohlenstoff. Huh? It's, so it's carbon. Well, uh, and here you see, these are now these oil lenses. And around uh, Greenland, all the big, the giant companies like Shell, uh, uh, we all uh, B British Petro, they have all made their claims already and said, here we will drill. Even in the Arctic, and they find these oil lenses to get it out. And this is extremely dangerous uh, if you do it there. But uh, it's only to explain, th this is about the Jurassic time, 150 million years ago, when it happened. Uh, and uh, we are using the energy of the suns of 150 million years ago and spoil it within th some decades. You know, this is the human problem. Uh, no other animal or, or, or nature could do it. Well, and uh, here, you know, forests take long to grow and require much, much space. And uh, they produce the photosynthesis and change the minerals with water, root, and sun energy into leaves, and so on, and, and, and then it becomes wood and compost, and, and that's, that, that's, and producing o oxygen. Well, now the next point, which is very f f uh, fascinating. Uh, how much uh, you need volume, uh, uh, to make, to fertilize the land. And we have uh, uh, artificial fertilizers, which costs money and a big industry, and the industry wants to do the business further on. They are not uh, interested not to make, to stop this job. But what, uh, what, what they produce, uh, artificially done, very often mixed with poisons against insects and so on. Uh, this is like rocks compared with this dust, for you can't do it better. And, uh, and uh, here, once more, pictures from above. Of course, currents are very uh, the meteorology and all these things we need is the biggest computers for the all these movements are so complicated to get it in the machine. No, that's the reason that you have so, so big computers. 
And now it's fantastic what you see. Red is absolutely fertile. Yellow is quite a lot fertile. Green is really still fertile and producing plankton. Light blue is meso meso. And what is really blue is absolute not fertile. That means the area in the oceans which is not fertile, making no uh, uh, electrolyse, is much, much bigger than uh, all the deserts uh, on the land side. And uh, they are producing uh, half of the uh, uh, photosynthesis is pre produced by the oceans under these conditions. And we only need to cover this 5% uh, to get it out. What to do? And uh, if you see now these red things here, then it's even a problem. And this is that red, not we have so fertile rivers there. It's, it's so red for all the land uh, uh, agriculture is pushing too much fertilizers into the land and the rivers bring it into the Baltic. So the Baltic nearly uh, starts to be killed. You know, then has, uh, kriegen wir die Alben, Algenwachstum, all this Zeug. Well, and what you can see here now is very interesting. Uh, this is Amazonas Delta. And the dust is coming from here, from the rocks, from the mountains. And it's going down with the river, and the river makes this thin cover under this cover of, of, of fruitful uh, vegetation and, 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 and uh, ground. There is naked sand and not fruitful. If you kill the trees and, you, and, and, and the water uh, it takes the soil off, then you get a desert. For the deserts, uh, I think uh, Zobek has shown it very impressive. The deserts are in this area. And here you see, see the desert. Here in the south, you have again the deserts. Here you have the Atacama, you know. Yes, you have the Kalahari. Here you have uh, 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 Australia. Well, and. Schweizer, diese Ausrahl. Ja, ja, das reicht. Nicht, nicht Austria. <laughs> well, and, well, this is a challenge. And now you see a f funny thing uh, that's here. What is happening here? And what is happening here? There's no river going into the ocean. It's very simple. It's dust with wind speed. And if you are in Munich or in Hamburg and you have a strong southerly wind taking the dust out of the desert, out, out of the Sahara, then sometimes you see it on your, your window screen uh, in the car. And this dust is so fine uh, that it is transported at the highest levels of the air about thousands of miles and it will not fall out. Only if it comes in the area where, where there is uh, the, the air humid and then it drops down. Uh, but even this dust from the Sahara, which is in the air, not coming down, it's like stones against what the, the glaciers have uh, polished. And the main point is what stones do they have polished? And these, uh, especially granite, is one of the most fertile stones. Well, uh, now we take these three areas, Amazonas Delta, the Grand Canaries, uh, uh, the dust of the Sahara, and then up there, where I showed you the pictures before where we have been with the ship and have made measurements. 
But what you easily can see is the northern half of the globe is fertilized the water. And that is the main part of the water in the world producing this electrolytic uh, uh, work. And, uh, and if you look here at this point, about here are the Azoren, the islands, you know. And this is about the area, this height, middle of Spain, uh, where the water is fruitful, uh, fertile, and here it becomes less and less. And here in between, you see that is still uh, the effect of the Passat winds. The Passat winds are only going east to west. The northern, the northern winds are going from west to east. From west to east. You know, here you see it fertilized, here you see it personalized, and here the, this calm fertilization is this. And so are the currents. And I told you about the ship. In old times, you only made a rig for a ship for the route you wanted to sail, and of course, you sailed with the natural winds, uh, with their direction. People knew it. Even the Phoenicians, you know, the Phoenicia, they already discovered America long, long, long before the, 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 the people here from, from, from Island. And they uh, use oh shit, this wind. They never came back. <laughs> you can't say with these kind of ships against the wind for so long distance. But you uh, can f find it out genetically with, the peop uh, with some people which lived here. That means they went up the Amazonas River, went into the mountains, dropped down here. And uh, here you can find it genetically that they are Phoenicians are coming from the Mediterranean. It is absolutely fantastic for the Scythes. And during the Ice Age, they moved from here, from Russia, crossing Atlantic and going down. That was about uh, 20,000 before Christ. They came very late. Well, uh, Amazonas Delta. In the end of the Amazonas, you see these mangrove forests. This is the typical uh, vegetation producing now uh, uh, oxygen and absorbing uh, CO2. And so it looks from the satellite, you see uh, how it is going in. And now you have a current going up here. You can see it very easy. It's not going here, for the water is going with the wind, and the wind comes from east. You know? So every sailor who passes comes from, from here. It's arriving here in the Caribbean. Here it is a bit too dangerous, you know, there are a lot of pilots with, with guns, although I didn't dare to go there. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the current, the water current is going up, and therefore it's here the uh, fertilized area. Well, and now you see uh, it's coming down. The Amazonas water f is fertilizing all the landscape there, all around. And if it comes into the sea, then it's fertilizing here. Plankton is starting to grow. And you see it here. Uh, that means, uh, what can we, c can we manipulate it that the deserts do the same? Yeah. Only in the upper part. Of, of, of the water. As deep as the energy of the sun is going in, the higher the better. And the good thing is the dust is not sinking, not very quick, uh, 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 minimum. Next point is the Sahara. 
east wind, dust, only dust. Uh, it's the same with the Kalahari and, and so on. Ne? And you see it here, and only what is in between the sand, the fine particles, will go into the air, it will be transported. And these are the Canary Islands, and at the moment, Aktiv is there. It's a not very delighting reason that they, they are there. For I have enormous problems to go on with these expeditions, for the biggest problems are human beings. Every scientist is was jealous. jealous against the other one. Every university is jealous against the other one. They do not cooperate. They say, we will not do it. We will not pay it if, if they get the Nobel Prize. We do. It's unbelievable what's going on, for this is a very young, uh, very young thing, and everybody wants to be the first one. And now they are, you know, it's, it's like uh, the thrombose in, in medicine. Well, and here you see wh wh where you have it green. Then you see that it starts to become a desert here already. And that is an area where she is now making some uh, things, but only with Sahara dust, not with the fertile uh, dust from above. For, for, for we only found some Spain's uh, and universities supporting this. Well, Sahara, no comment. Uh, 20 mu is the, the, the size of the corn. Uh, these are the winds going down, and then you have uh, in a certain region where it's blooming. Now it's blooming. And the next now in Greenland, where it's much more fort fertile. Uh, the, the water is going into the fjords. The big stones are lost in the beginning. You know, uh, a glacier, this is water. A glacier is going down, and ice wants to swim. Then it breaks. And then it's swimming up, and then you have an iceberg. You know, and uh, only a little part is upside, all the mass is down. And then this iceberg drift is, down, is drifting down. You have seen a, a big valley before. And it's like a plow. He is, uh, so the fjords are very steep and very deep. But in the end, he melts uh, up. And if he comes to the mouth of the fjord, then he's grounding. And uh, the northern ice coming from the pole, the, 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 the sea ice, they are coming together. Then you get a conflict with the thrombosis. And normally, even in summertime, uh, these uh, mouths of, of the fjords are blocked. But there, they are still melting, and then the, the, the current is very slow, but this current keeps the finest powder at getting it out into the ocean. Well, and now you see, I have shown you in the beginning one photo. I think it was, it was somewhere here. Yeah, we sailed. Oh, what was Island? We sailed up here. And in the end, we were up here, and we were very lucky that we came back. It was a bit, bit too risky. Uh, well, and here you see now how far this powder is going out and blooming in spite of the fact water cold, not much sun, and only for a short time. Well, and this is a process. It's since 950 million of years. So that is the scale. And that is the reason that there is so much dust uh, on the bottom of the sea and so much oil on the bottom of the sea. And it's an endless resource. It's um, enough to do it f for hundreds of years to do this process, even to make uh, Earth fertile. 
if you use it. No, uh, and only a little part, uh, likely not more than two million tons go with the current. But even this amount with these tiny particles is a lot. Uh, so we have to make the transport nicht, if the current does not the right way. Hey. Well, uh, these are now the three principles and the most uh, strong thing is uh, what do the glaciers, and the point is it's not only Greenland, it's Alaska, it's all, also all the Siberian rivers go to the north, but there you get a problem. Water is only freezing uh, with normally, if it's sweet water, with zero degree. But if it's salty water, then you need minus four degree before water is freezing. And so you have, even in summer times north of Siberia, you can go with ships, but the ground is uh, frozen water. And if you put the anchor out, I did it, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like stone. So you can't uh, suck it up but you can suck it where the Gulf Stream is uh, existing. There it's, it's, it's not frozen. Well, uh, uh, how does it work? That is a procedure of the glaciers, uh, scrubbing the stones and the material. And if you have one cube, and change it into this powder in small cubes. Then you have a scale normally from uh, 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 two thousandths apart. Uh, but this is even. Very good. If you take one by one meter, it's and it has a surface of six square meters, a stone. If you make it to powder then you c get three million surface. And that is, a, you know, we, we can't think in our head like this. That is, uh, but, but uh, it's exponential. But uh, if you do, and this makes nature, you only need this, and you have now three million square meters to put it in the earth or to put it on the soil. Well, if you take a microscope, yeah, you have uh, 10 mu, 20 mu, up to 50 mu. Then this is plankton and this is this powder. Well, and now uh, what we do? What is our experiment at the moment? Uh, we go down now with the ship. Uh, we wanted to do it from the Azoren, where the money stopped for the universities are fighting against each other and, and, so, and so on. So uh, Jonas sat there and said, uh, em empty, I have people doing it for nothing, I have scientists on board doing it for nothing, we can't go on. So we came into a crisis. Bill Gates gave 100,000 uh, to, to overcome a, a, a critical year, and now uh, he went to the uh, to the Canary Islands, for he couldn't stay in in in, in the uh, uh, ah, wie heißt die, the, nicht die, in the Azoren, for you have the very big Atlantic waves in the harbor, and you kill the ship. With every storm, he had to go out and sail in the storm to come back if the storm is over. Well, and if you uh, you know a ship needs to be in open sea if a storm is coming, never in the harbor, or it's a very sheltered harbor. Well, and uh, now we have made a grid, and the idea was now to sail zigzag with the ship in zack, 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 uh, and to make measurements between here and here, 
to find out the density. And this here, these are the Azoren. South of the Azoren, it becomes less. And so, uh, well, that I, I told it already. Ah, I'm finished. Well, uh, we had to stop this. And now uh, we make a, another. Uh, uh, we are in deep trouble, for we need now the support. I try to, to, to inform a lot of people to support it, to go on. Uh, and uh, so we are now sitting uh, in, in, in the Grand Canaries and making uh, with the Hara dust the measurements. But we want to do it what I have shown you. So thank you very much. It took quite a long time, but it's a real problem. Yeah. And what I wanted to show is everybody has to try to solve the problem. Uh, and uh, we are the producers of CO2 with our civilization. And it will increase in spite of all our faults. That's what Sobek said. Then when I asked him, that is the end, and they said, start to draw. And we do, but we are not alone. There are other people uh, who find the other way. And if this works together, we stop pollution and we start uh, uh, with it, and it's fantastic. Another thing is poisoning the world, but that's another story. Could you elaborate, please, uh, on how you could use that to, to how you can use this uh, uh, results of the expedition to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere? Uh, aha, that is a political question. Uh, the biggest problem are people and mankind, nationalism, egoism, uh, and uh, eagerness. Ne? And when we started the first attempt, that was the idea, we take this rock flower from the sea. Uh, we had laboratories, even in Brasilia, yeah, which found out in the laboratory that it works uh, in, 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 in on, on, on the acres. And, uh, in, and, and they found out that it's 20 as effective as the best artificial thing uh, on, the, uh, on, 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 the, on the earth. And then we said, okay, we do it from Danish, uh, from, from uh, Greenlandic waters outside the zone, and we bring it to Niger over Volta, up the Niger River, and uh, there was a plan to make test farms to say it works. And even these poor countries get a good fertilizer. And it costs nearly nothing compared to the artificial one. And the point was, of course, to say this even can become uh, a profitable job. For you only need a vessel. You only need to suck. The material is nothing. It's the cheapest way for transportation is a ship. And you put it there. We couldn't do it in behalf of corruption in these countries. Forget about it. It's, it, it doesn't work. And that the uh, United Nations are helpless against corruptions. Everybody knows it, how to do it. And uh, then we stopped it. And then came the next idea from Mini Grossing that, uh, that he says, and that is the answer, the political answer. If we take this flower, rock flower, from international waters, where it is, and bring it to the deserts of the oceans, which are international waters, and nobody, there's no corruption, and it is done by the UNO, then you avoid 
this kind of human, uh, human and, and social problems, and then only everybody of us has to pay tax, you know, like we try it now, all the facts, uh, everybody has to pay it, but to the United Nations. And then they say, well, we make a bid. Uh, who wants to transport it? We guarantee it. And they only need one, one dozen ships to do it. For, you know, if you, it, it's, it's, it's like homeopathy. For, for it's spreading so much that it works. So, in so far, it's a very realistic political way to do it. It was not so realistic uh, to do it with different governments. In the mom moment, I have the problem to do it with different people at different universities. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Falkwin. Thank you for your lecture. Um, I, I remember a one uh, lecture, it was also for the ACC, some guy from California came and he said, uh, whenever you have an idea which is already able to be realized, it's a bad idea. But once you have an idea which in the moment is not going to be realized, it's a sensational idea. And he comes from Silicon Valley and he he's doing a lot of start-up research and he always said, things which are not possible, that's the start of a great startup. So yeah. I'm sure that already you have a new team here, which will um, be maybe the new team of the active and help you to finish <laughs> your thinking. And I think it is a really, s really sensational, big thinking. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was a really pleasure to yeah. get to know your yeah, your experience, and it's not stopped the project, it will continue. Are there any questions among the audience concerning the idea? I only can say all the promoters of those things are idiots, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody believes them, and very often they are. Okay. But sometimes they are fantastic, like Einstein, you know. <laughs> Before, when he discovered the rules, the majority said it's an idiot. Mm. Well, and uh, uh, that's the same problem. Uh, the never get tired. Okay, um, so, so I propose that maybe we continue our uh, philosophy and discussion at the bar that we will offer you some cheese and some wine and maybe you can if you have personal questions you can ask for Kim mark later on at the bar so thanks a lot for your attention and we see tomorrow bye